both just have enormous respect for each other. What gladiator has that Say big bright spear as a net? Uh, Look, the judges are not. Even the Egyptian judges are not. Until recently, you claimed that the Earth revolved around the sun. Welcome to History Bites. I'm Rick Green. These days, it seems like every celebrity is suffering for their work. Whether it's drugs, divorce, sex scandals, or anorexia, people want artists to suffer, preferably in public. Now, this is not a new thing. It was just as bad in the early 1800s. Back then, writers, painters, and musicians seemed to be tripping over each other to be troubled, tortured, and turbulent. Everyone was wearing their art on their sleeve. In 1839, composer Franz Liszt and some creative cohorts decided to honor a pioneer of this romantic movement, Mr. Moody himself, Ludwig von Beethoven. Imagine turned on, tuned in, passionate artists, celebrating their neuroses and giving each other awards. And you've got the best seat in the house in front of your television. I'm here at the hottest award show of the Romantic Era, the, the rage of the Romantic Era, the Tearies. I'm just dying to get the lowdown on who is with whom, who's wearing who, and with what illness. I'm here with sexy writer slash divorcee, George Sand. George, who are you wearing tonight? Oh, no, this is Fred Chopin. I'm not wearing him, I'm carrying him. <laughs> well, nice to see the writers supporting the musicians tonight. Am I right? Am I right? Am I... They say I have tuberculosis, but I feel fine. <coughs> Live from the Vienna Opera House in beautiful downtown Vienna, it's the 1839 annual Western European Theory Awards with your host, Franz Liszt, and the Vienna Chamber Ensemble. Special musical guests, Paganini, Clara Schumann, Felix Mendelssohn, Hector Berlioz, Frederick Chopin, Richard Wagner, Jenny Lind and Giuseppe Verdi, Anton Weber, and writers Honoré Balzac and Elizabeth Merritt, with a special painting performance by Eugene Delacroix. And now, your host, the list to top everybody's list, Franz Liz! Please, just, just allow me a moment to compose myself. Compose myself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me beg here, people. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, of course, to the ladies and gentlemen's clothing. <laughs> Look at George Sand here looking around for the young woman in drag. <laughs> That's going to happen. <laughs> no, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here this evening to celebrate and fawn over artistic genius. And what better place than the city that has showcased so many wonderful stars, and not to mention the schnitzel. <laughs> the schnitzel. Vienna, Austria! <laughs> this evening, we've gathered an unprecedented number of composers, virtuosos, and opera stars together for a, a breathtaking spectacle of light, sound, and emotional upheaval. Life does not get better than this. Especially for those of you who are going to go home and commit suicide at the end of the evening. <laughs> so, let's get on with the performance this evening. Our first musical performance, ladies, Get your smelling salts out. Say a Hail Mary for the violinist violinist. Put your hands together for Nikki Paganini. Mr. Paganini is playing a tribute to Ludwig von Beethoven. Time to play the weakest philosopher. Comte de Vigny, which philosopher whose dictum was the greatest good for the greatest number, recently had his mummified remains installed at University College in London? I don't know. And I blame God and the powers that Jeremy be. Jeremy Bentham. Margaret Fuller, who developed the cult of transcendentalism? Ralph Waldo Emerson. Correct. Don't you have any questions about women? And correct. Soren Kierkegaard, who wrote, Women are not meant to undergo hard labor, but who also seriously injured an old lady by knocking her down a flight of stairs. Uh, that would be German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer. Correct. Arthur Schopenhauer. What is the name of the English invention that is attached to letters as proof of payment? Proof? There is no absolute proof of anything. The stamp or penny black. 
The Academy of Painted Pictures, Musical Arts and Sciences is made up of members of the various European kingdoms, uh, patrons of the arts and musical cognoscenti. Uh, the winners of the Western European Annual Tier Awards are decided upon by a peer voting process, the results of which are reliably tabulated by Price Badenhaus. Awards are presented for outstanding individual or collective achievement of the year in up to 200 categories, from light opera to bronze castings of military heroes. In earlier times, artists had just been hired guns who were told what to do by the church or wealthy patrons. Yeah, give me a Virgin Mary and a couple of saints and make sure it matches the curtains. Creativity for cash commissions. But by 1839, things had changed for artists, writers, and composers. Beethoven made a decent living off his music sales and nobody called his tune but him. Ooh, I love it when they let chamber music out of the chamber. Very, very nice. But right now, we're going to change the tonality of the evening. We're going to remember a, a colleague who can't be with us tonight. A man who influenced all of us. With his turbulent symphonies, his passionate concertos, his musical jokes, his pedantic cadenzas, I speak, of course, of the maestro. The man they call Run LVB, the deaf Ludwig, the king of Strumendrang, Ludwig von Beethoven. I remember one time I asked Beethoven why he never got married, and, and he looked at me and, and he said, what? Because of course at that time he was deaf. And, and then he took this huge book and threw it at me and said, go get some more spätzle. Ludwig van Beethoven was born into a musical family. Although his father never had his son's talent, he was able to instill in him the great truths about individual rights and freedoms. When Ludwig was small, his father encouraged him to practice constantly, even through the wee hours of the morning. Ah, I tell you, it's the repetition of themes and endings that I love, you know? Beethoven's like this tenacious wolverine won't let go. These little musical ideas keep coming back again like he just couldn't get them out of his head, you know? ba ba Who hasn't copied those endings, you know? ba 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 Bam, ba bam. Oh, oh, that last one was my idea. Oh, yeah, he was the same at parties, though, you know? Just when you thought he was leaving, you know? Bam! Now the story about his intestinal distress. And I mean, uh, this was around the time he stopped changing his clothes, too, so... He was a really hard guy to get close to, but I'll tell you, great endings, oh, great endings! <laughs> Well, have you tried opium? Yes, I've got laudanum. It just makes me drowsy and nauseous. Then I can't get anything done and I just feel worse. This is a common problem. Yes, laudanum contains opium, but I suggest you try pure opium, Greta, because laudanum is just a tincture. It's full of alcohol. It's no wonder you, you can't stay awake. Pure opium, huh? It's, it's the drug of choice for the kind of emotional pain you have that well, it, it strikes when you least expect it. In fact, I feel if you suffer from any type of, of, of stress or melancholy, write a poem, paint a landscape, then talk to your doctor about opium. The Chinese government announced it has managed to seize and destroy 20,000 chests of pure opium. The huge haul of opium belonged to British traders who said the Chinese government had no right to interfere with a legitimate business. Great, because Someone told me it would cause vomiting and excessive sweating and psychosis or addiction, even death. Yes, well, opium isn't for everyone. Comte de Vigny, who is a devout Christian, writes about sympathy and ethics, and yet says his fiance was far less important than his work and women are a joke. Soren Kierkegaard. Correct. Margaret, who said the universe is blind, irrational, and evil. Kierkegaard's fiance? Arthur Schopenhauer. Soren. Who publishes his philosophical tracts under pseudonyms? Alan Smithy. You. Beethoven just stormed out. And he leaves this note and it says, 
there are thousands of princes, and there will be thousands more, but there is only one Beethoven. <laughs> and that, my friend, that is an artist. And the winner of the Beethoven Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Ludwig von Beethoven. Oh, accepting uh, for Ludwig B is Hector B, Mr. Berlioz. Oh, hey, look at this, it's incredible. Oh, well, I know that if Ludwig were here, he'd want me to thank uh, uh, himself. And I'm sure uh, whatever award or monument you give him, he felt that uh, uh, he deserved it, okay? <laughs> Da, 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 da. <laughs> anyway, I'd just like to say that the guy knew how to do an ending. So went ahead. Thank you. I'd also like to tell you that if uh, Beethoven were here tonight, he'd uh, say, endings, straight endings, it's all in the ending. No went to end. End dramatically. Around 1839, artists everywhere were being shaken up by the Romantic movement. The term romantic didn't mean art for lovers, it meant art that expressed emotions. We have enough paintings to illustrate the stories of the Bible for all the peasants who can't read. Let's look inward, celebrate the self, feelings, nothing more than feelings. The Romantics said, forget restraint, logic, and formal manners. Let's be spontaneous, intuitive, natural. And some of them went as far as obnoxious, unreasonable, and thoroughly offensive. My daughter Melissa has caught up with Mendelssohn. Talk to him, honey. Talk. Can she talk? She's, he's a nice Jewish boy. Talk to him uh, about something. Of course, the hottest story at the Tearies tonight is the performance by Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdi and controversial composer Richard Wagner. Worried about people downloading music from his new telegraph system, Tapster. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking of controversy, here are two musicians from the opposite end of the German musical spectrum. Please give it up for Felix Mendelssohn and Richard Wagner. I know your people are perverted. You're okay because you converted. I hope you ain't perverted. If so, I'm disconcerted. Remember, I'm Teutonic, harmonic, I'm quadraphonic. Your music sounds demonic, not supersonic like Schubert's leader. I'm a firm believer that Germans should be leaders. Why don't you talk to me? I'm your smallest fan. I'm Wagnermann. Leave me cold and I'm wondering why. I took this job at all Racist pigs like you Drive me up the wall And even if you're lightweight Light motifs were all good I'm not liking All your Viking crap The 1839 annual Western European Terry Awards are brought to you by Daguerreotype, turning your colorful world brown. It's the official film of Queen Victoria. And by the United Kingdom. We're not just an island anymore. Even with all the romantic new ideas sweeping through the art world, some things remained the same. Women in the 1800s still had a tough time cracking the old boys' artist club. Some wrote feminist essays against it. Some just used male pen names, and a few dressed up like members and walked right in. He is a composer, a brilliant pianist, and a very good friend of mine. She is a writer, a cross-dresser, and more importantly, really good in a sack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, come on! <laughs> no, together they make a fine couple and very entertaining dinner guests. Please welcome Frederick Chopin and George Sand! For the artist, whether in spoken word or music, performance bridges the gap between inspiration and understanding. 
Gentle craftsmen expose themselves daily to criticism and ridicule mm -hmm. for their art. For myself, I find solace behind men's clothing. Fred, how does performance anxiety affect you? <laughs> We're here. I'm here to present the award for the most sensitive performance in piano concerto or piano solo. And the nominees are misogynist Friedrich Kochbrenner, male chauvinist John Field, sexist pig Ferdinand Miller, and the gorgeous, brilliant, talented female Clara Schumann. And the winner is. Clara Schumann! Arthur Schopenhauer, who believes in finding truth by denial of the will through chastity and poverty? Any right-thinking person. You. Comte de Vigny, which woman writer dresses as a man? Margaret Fuller. George Sand. Margaret Fuller, Comte de Vigny is known for what? A fat mouth. A stoic <laughs> despair framed by sparse classicism. Arthur, can you name the philosopher who said, actions possess moral worth only when we do our duty for its own sake? I can't. Yes, I, for Emmanuel, can't. Well, philosophers, out of a possible 10,000 marks, you have banked a sorry 350. Whose corset is missing a few eyelets? Whose epistemology is based on an erroneous distinction between faith and reason? I share this with you, uh, but I'm so glad it's me. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you uh, to my father, who gave me piano lessons when I was five. Um, I know you're looking down at me right now, and uh, in fact, he's sitting up in the chandelier right now. Thanks, Papa. Thanks for believing in me. Um, uh, uh, to all the great uh, composers who gave us such wonderful piano works. Uh, there's so many. Um, Bach, Mozart, Haydn, Schubert, uh, oh, Robert! <laughs> More big, beautiful moments when History Bites returns. Da, 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 da. By 1839, Western music had evolved because of new philosophies, new political ideas, and especially new technology. Advances in the instruments affected the type of music being made. For example, because the piano now had a greater range of volume, composers could really express a greater range of emotion. As well, by following the groundbreaking example of Beethoven, composers found they could achieve financial independence. They didn't have to answer to sponsors or patrons. Financial independence and technological breakthroughs added up to creative freedom was another ceremony last evening to honor scientific and technological achievement in music. Here are some of the highlights. For single frame casting of steel to structure strong enough to produce a piano instead of a smaller harpsichord, Alpheus Babcock. For best tape check action for the upright piano, Robert Warnham. For inventing the double action hammer, Sebastian Erhard. And in the wind section, for standard tone hole placement, this is the second time you voted for Hegel. Why? Well, and because you can't have that kind of construct when existence is incomplete and constantly developing, and because his systemization of the whole of existence isn't all that logical. And also because he's been dead for nine years and no longer exists. Okay, yes, that too, Comte but- de Vigny, you voted for Schopenhauer. Yes. May I ask you why? He didn't answer the last few questions, and his pessimism is really bringing me down. Treat. We have a treat. We have the beautiful, and might I venture to add, the voluptuous, virtuoso, Jenny Lynn. In his first opera, Giuseppe Verdi introduces us to Alberto. Set in the 1228, the title character returns home from exile and finds that his daughter, Leonora, has been seduced by Ricardo and dishonored. Please welcome the most amazing and the coolest guy I've ever met, conducting the totally brilliant nominated area, Oberto Giuseppe Verdi. <laughs> Oh, no. 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 Oh,
and nobody votes me off twice, Anne. Schopenhauer, you were actually the strongest player in that round. Does it bother you that the weakest player has voted you off out of spite? I achieved purity through suffering. Yes, but it's votes that count. And with two votes, Schopenhauer, you are the weakest thinker. Off you to sing. <laughs> Okay, this is it, the big moment. I'm so nervous. The nominees for most depressing and disturbing artistic work are Honoré D. Balzac for his story collection, The Human Comedy Part One. Believe me, they're a lot less funny than they sound. <laughs> Eugene Delacroix's disturbing painting about a woman who is having her throat cut by a bad man, the death of Sardanopolis. Samuel Taylor Coleridge for his long and depressing poem, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. And Victor Hugo for Less Miserables. And the winner is, could use some opium about now. <laughs> I knew it. Victor Hugo for Less Miserable. Franz Liszt's great piano tour was a big success. He raised enough money to fund a huge statue for Beethoven. Unfortunately, artists couldn't bask in those bad times and depressing emotions forever. Eventually, there was a backlash, and Victorian morals stepped in to toe the line. Sex, drugs, and booze went underground again, and artists had even more reason to feel tormented and misunderstood. Still, the Romantic movement had changed forever the way people looked at art, and how art looked at people. Because rules are meant to be broken, and history is meant to be bitten. Here comes Branwell Bronte, brother of the famous Bronte sisters. Bronte, can we talk? I think he saw us. Bronte saw us. Uh, <laughs> Branwell, darling, can we talk? You look fabulously dissolute. I don't know if it's the gin or the melancholy, but I love it. Where are your sisters, the lovely Charlotte, Emily, and Anne? I don't know, they came in a separate carriage. They needed to faint. Tell me, what's it like being the brother of such artistic sisters? Yeah, uh, Jonah, I'm an artist myself. I mean, I paint. Like, I got a painting right here. I got to show you. Yeah, this. I'm sure you do. 